I just pushed it now, but it wasn't. I don't think it was recording either before. Let's watch it for a sec. Just formatted this whole thing just to make sure there's nothing on it. So keep an eye on it. All this talking I did for nothing. Is it still recording? Okay. So I Norton is going to be I short circuit and R Norton the same as R Thevenin, the same exact techniques. So let's take a few examples, go through them. Here is the first one. Let me know if that recording stops. So we have this circuit that has a voltage source of 4 volts. It has a resistor on the top of 2K. It has a current source of 2 milliamp. We have 3K. And we have 1K here. And let's assume the question is, can you tell me, can you tell me what the current through this is? What is I here? So that's really my load resistor right there. Because I'm looking for the current through that one. So that becomes my load. So what I'm going to do is take this circuit. Since I'm looking for current, it really makes sense to use the Norton equivalent because you'll have a current source in parallel with the resistor in parallel with this. So you can use what? Current division. So I'm going to find the equivalent of this circuit right there. I'm going to take this entire circuit, the one you see in the red dotted box, and replace that with replace it with a current source pointing upward with the value called IN, I Norton, in parallel with the resistor called RN, R Norton. This is where we cut it. That's the equivalent of this. Now let's bring in that resistor there. And this is the 1K. And I'm looking for that current. So once I know these two, I can find what I is current division. So let's find I Norton. We said I Norton can be found by I short circuit. So here's my resistor, 3K, 2 milliamp, 2K, plus minus 4 volts and now we're going to put a short circuit, a wire right there. That's I short circuit. And just because I'm using Norton here, that doesn't mean I can't do source transformation. I can still do source transformation. Notice if I take these two here and I use source transformation for them, that will give me a current source in parallel with a 2K resistor. And the only question, what's the value of that current source? What do you think? I'm doing source transformation. Eight Not eight. Two. two. I equals V over R. Four divided by 2K, which is two milliamp.
And notice these two sources pushing upward, I can combine them together, they're in parallel, make them equivalent to what? One source of four milliamp, two K here, three K, and I'm looking for that current, I short circuit. How do we find I short circuit? Isn't that current division? So I short circuit is going to equal the 4 milliamp. If I'm looking for that current, I got to use this resistor over the sum of them. Is that 1.6 milliamp? Four times two is eight, divided by five is 1.6 milliamp. So we found I short circuit. Next, I gotta find what? R equivalent, or R Norton. So let's find R Norton. Here's my circuit, 3K, 2 milliamp, 2K, 4 volts. And I'm looking, looking back here, when I chop the circuit right here, looking back, what is that R Norton, which is R equivalent? Since you only have independent sources, what do we do? We kill them all. So how do you kill the voltage source? You make it a short circuit. How do you kill a current source? You make it an open circuit. It's gone. And now looking back, can you tell me what R equivalent is? So R Norton, which is the same as R equivalent here, that should be what? Is that a 5K? These two resistors in series. So now I have the equivalent circuit. Let's go back and draw my circuit. This circuit now, and replace I Norton with its value, R Norton with its value. So we have a current source, and I forgot what the value of I Norton, what was it? 1.6 milliamp, was it? In parallel with what? 5K. And this is the 1K here. And I'm looking for that current, I. That's what the question was. Can I find I? current division now. I equals 1.6 milliamp times this resistor, the 5K, over the sum of them, which is what? 6K. One point six times five, eight divided by six, it is 1.33 milliamp. Done. Now this wasn't bad because you only have independent sources. The next example, I'm gonna put both independent and dependent and see what will happen. So let's put both here. We have this circuit.
minus the plus four thousand I sub X in parallel with ten K We have 10K. This is I sub X right here. We have a current source pointing upward of 4 milliamp. And the question, can you tell me what is the voltage across this 10K resistor? So we're looking for this voltage, V out. Again, what I'm going to do, and in this case, Thevenin will be really a better choice to use than Norton, but I'm going to do Norton to practice. I'm going to chop it here. and find the equivalent of this. The reason I said Thevenin will be a better choice when you replace it with Norton, this way you're going to have I Norton, R Norton, and you're going to have what? The 10K. So if you want to find the voltage here, you can only find the current first then go V equals I times R. No big deal. Next to a step. Well, if you did 7, it will be a voltage, a resistor, and a resistor, you can use voltage division. So this has one extra step. That's really the only difference. So this is actually my Norton equivalent of this circuit. Again, I'm going to start initially, or first thing, by finding I Norton. And I Norton is always I short circuit. So here's my circuit. Four thousand I sub X. Ten K, ten K, there's I sub X, four milliamp. Now I'm going to take a wire, attach it right here, and find the current coming down through it. That's my I short circuit. Everyone see that? Now, if I do KCL of this node, right at that node, which is this node here, that says the current in equals the current out. What is going to that node? I sub X, I sub X plus 4 milliamp, and what's leaving? I, I short circuit. So if I know what I sub X, I'm done, isn't it? So let me see if I can find what I sub X is. How do we find what I sub X is? And by the way, if you want, you can do source transformation here. I don't know if it makes the problem easier or not. It just makes the number smaller, which is more doable, you know, because instead of four, I don't like the 4,000. So if you wanted to do source transformation, you actually notice this is minus to plus. 
Oh, wait a minute, you can't. That's a voltage source. Sorry, that's a voltage. I thought it was a current for some reason. That's a voltage source. You can't do source transformation. If this is zero voltage right here, what's this voltage here? What's that voltage there? Mm -hmm. Nope, it's not negative four, that's a current. Right there. Nope. That's here. Right here is this end is going to be negative 4,000 I sub X. Because that's a ground, that's zero. Where is this attached to? That's all one node. That's a wire. That's a zero volt right here. There's nothing there. So if you want to do KCL of this node, maybe you can find I sub X. So we need to assign current. If you're going to do that, this is your super node. This is all one node. That's the same connection. Because this we treat this as a super node. Well, since this end is the same as that, all of this is the same thing. So actually, like this. That's one node. So you guys, uh, let's look and see what's going through it. So what do we have? What's going to that node? What's going to it? Well, how about this current? Is it leaving or coming? What do you want to do with it? Doesn't matter. Yeah, you want I'm just saying which way you want to sign it. No? Going down here, you want to make it like this? Okay. So now if we do that, we say, okay, let's see, let's see. What do we have going to that node? Well, going to it, this is the same node. You get this one going to it. Let's call it IZ. This equation probably going to just disappear. Going to it, what do we have? I sub Z. What else going to it? How about the four amps? Four milliamps. Uh, what else going to it? How about I sub X? And guess what? What's leaving that node? Let's look and see what's leaving that node. I told you this equation will be useless. I sub X leaving. What else? Four milliamps. And I sub Z, you can't solve that equation. Zero equals zero. So we gotta look for other ways of doing it. So this is not um, not the best way of doing it. So let's try a different method. Because zero equals zero doesn't help me. Well, Let's redraw that again. Four thousand I sub X. No. Four milliamp. Ten K I sub X I short circuit. 
Maybe I should do mesh equations. Maybe that might be a better choice. Let's try that. This current is what? That's I short circuit. This current here, through that, that's the same current, so this must be I sub X. And this current is what? I sub Y, I'm gonna call it. The reason I call this I sub X, when the top branch, this current is the same as that. Okay, can I do a KVL? I have two unknowns, I sub X and I sub Y. Let's do an equation right there. Plus to minus, that's plus. Four thousand I sub X. I'm gonna travel, I'm gonna enter this plus to minus, that will be what? Plus ten thousand times the current down. What's the current down? Yep, I sub Y minus I sub X. Clean that. 3,000 I sub X plus what? 10,000 I sub Y is equal to zero if you divide by 10,000 or 3,000? Oh, no, that's wrong. The math is wrong. What's 4,000 minus 10,000? Is that negative 6,000? I looked at it as 1,000 here. Negative 6,000 here. 4,000 minus the 10,000 is negative 6,000. We can divide by 1,000. You have what? Negative 6 I sub X plus 10 I sub Y is equal to 0. 6 I sub X equals what? 10 I sub Y or I sub Y equals 0.6 I sub X. That's the first equation. I can't do an equation right here because I don't know what the voltage right there. But I can go on the outside. See the outside? So if I travel on the outside, I'm going to be traveling clockwise, so this is going to be plus, minus, plus, minus. So let's go in this direction. And what are we going to have? Uh, we'll say go on the outside plus 10K times what? Going up, it's I sub X minus I sub Y plus to minus that's plus 10 K I sub X equals zero now do the math divide by 10 K by the way to make it easy I sub X minus I sub Y plus I sub X is equal to zero. I sub y is equal what? Two I sub x. Two equations by two unknowns. If you set them equal to each other, because I sub y is the same, you end up with 0.6 I sub x plus two I sub x is equal to zero. That tells me I sub x has to be zero. If I sub X is zero, then what's I short circuit? Remember we said I short circuit is I sub X plus four milliamp. Well, if I sub X is zero, then I short circuit equals four milliamps. That's your I Norton. So after a few minutes, we managed to solve for I sub X. W once you have I sub X, you know I Norton. So the next piece, what's R Norton? Now notice you have 
and depend on dependent sources. So you can't just kill them. So next is R. Norton. What is R. Norton? Since you get both, that's to find R. Norton, we know it's I short, I mean V open circuit over I short circuit. So I better find V open circuit first. I know where my I short circuit is. That's four milliamps. But do I know what the value there is? V open circuit? No. If I can find it, I'm done. So let's try to find it. Let's do an open circuit there. Four thousand ICBX. Ten K. Ten K. ICBX. Four milliamp. And this is V open circuit right here. Again, V open circuit. I go, well, I can find V open circuit. If I know what these currents are, I gotta repeat the process again. If I assign currents, this current will be what? I sub X, which happens to be what? Not zero, not here. How about negative four milliamp? That's negative four milliamp. This current going has nowhere to go except down. That's opposite to this. I'm done. Because if I know what that is, I know what the voltage here is. What's the voltage here? So if I redraw the circuit, just put numbers in it. What's 4,000 times a negative four? Well, the milli cancels the thousand, negative 16, right? So it's really going to reverse that, make it what? Plus to minus. Do you agree? Or I'll put negative 16, leave it like this. But that means plus to minus 16 on the top. This voltage here is zero. That's the ground. This is I sub X. What's the voltage on the top here? Uh, this voltage is going to be this much lower. So zero minus or minus, you're right. That's 16 volts. Because that minus is actually equivalent to flipping this, make it plus to minus. So you get 16 volts here. This current is going this way. It's a negative current, negative four. It's gonna mark it plus to minus. What's negative four times 10? Is that negative 40? This is 16 on this end. This one says this end is what? 40 lower than this end, lower. So what's the voltage here? Negative. So V open circuit equals negative 24 volts. Again, if you don't like that negative, that negative gets you confused here. Redraw that a little bit nicer. Go, you know what? This is plus to minus 16. Reverse the direction of it. 
if you're having a hard time with that. And if this is the 10, and this is the 10. Oh, actually, this is not negative. This will be plus 50, 16 minus a negative 40. 56. Because it says this end is negative 40, which means if you reverse them, it'll be minus on this end plus on that end, right? So it'll be minus here, plus here 40. We know this is 16, so this end has to be 40 more than 16, which is what? 56. Minus or minus. I gotta wake up, it's too early. So V open circuit is 56. If you see a lot of minus, just change the direction, make it a plus, it really makes life easy. This is 16 volts. This is the plus that says this end is 40 more than this. 40 more than this, that's 56. And instead of saying negative 40 less than, negative 40 less than, so a little bit confusing. So V open circuit's 56. Now, once you know that, can we find R Norton? R Norton, we said is V open circuit over I short circuit. What's V open circuit? I forgot that number, it's 56. And what's I short circuit? 4 milli point zero zero four. Let's do the math. 56 divided by point zero zero four. It's 14 kilo ohm. So my circuit equivalent now, where's that problem? Here is my circuit equivalent. I Norton, which is 4 milliamp, in parallel with what? 14K. And let's put the 10K there. And let me find the current through it so I can find the voltage. The question, what's V out? Let me find that current. So I will be four milliamp current division times 14 over what? 24, the Ks will cancel out. Product over the sum, or times this over the sum of them, not the product. Four times 14 divided by 24, 2.333. So what's V out then? 10K times I, Ohm's law. K's and I's will cancel. 2.33 times the 10, 23.3. So when you have an independent and dependent, R7 is always the same as R Norton. V open circuit over I short circuit. Now what happens if your circuit has only dependent sources? So I'll do the last case. Again, we did that in seven, but I put them on two videos, so you can go back and watch both videos. This one, if you have dependent only. Here's the good news. I Norton is gonna be zero. Don't waste your time on that. You're not gonna find it. So all you need to find is R Norton. And I'm not gonna say it's V open circuit over I short circuit. I'm gonna say it's V over I. And here's my circuit. 
plus minus 1.5i I have 3 ohms Two ohms, and I want to find the equivalent of the circuit right there. I'm cutting it right there. It says, "Can you tell me what the equivalent of this?" And I happens to be this. So the equivalent of this is going to be some resistor. It's called R Norton. And to find that R Norton, I'm going to apply a source to this. I can either put a current source or a voltage source. Well, it makes sense for me here to apply a current source instead of a voltage source. And you can pick any number for it. Why a current source? Because if I put a current source, let's say pick a number. Go ahead. One. One? One amp. I know what I is. Right? What is I then? Negative. Negative one. I know what that voltage source is. Makes my life easy. So what I need to do now is find the voltage right here. And if I know what that voltage, R Norton is going to be, the voltage, which is V, I'm looking for it, divided by the current, which is one amp. So you just substituted it for... So it's got to find what V is. Yeah, whatever source so you, you use for it. Right? Huh? So you find V, you substitute yep. it. Yep, i got to find V now. So now my circuit, if I, since I equals in this circuit negative 1 amp, so my source here, really the value of that source is what? Negative 1.5, right? So I can reverse it if you don't like the negative. Make it minus plus 1.5 instead of plus minus negative 1.5, reverse it, and go as plus 1.5. So this voltage here is what, V? Isn't that what V right there? Because my V was right here. So if I do KCL at this node, at that node right here, the current going to that node equals the current leaving. What is going to that node? This current, let's label them, one, two. What's going to it? I1, what else going to it? One amp, and what's leaving? I sub two. What's I sub 1? It's this voltage minus that voltage. If this is ground, what's this voltage? Negative 1.5, yes. So it's this voltage minus that. So negative 1.5 minus V over 3 plus the 1 equals. What's this current? Isn't that this voltage? Minus this over what? So v over two. V minus zero over two. What's my LCD here? Six? Negative three minus two V plus six equals three V. Double check my number, just make sure I'm not making a mistake. 5V equals, what's negative 3 plus 6? Is that a 3? V equals, is that 0. 0.6? Do I know what R sub N now? The Norton equivalent is going to be 0. 0.6 divided by 1, which is 0. 0.6 ohm. So this circuit that you see here, where the dot, I should put a box around it. The circuit that you see inside the box, this one here, 
can be replaced with one resistor of 0.6 ohm. And that's how we have to deal with dependent sources only for both Thevenin and Norton. Finding R Norton and finding R Thevenin is exactly the same step, the same procedure. And the difference is finding V open circuit versus I short circuit. That's the difference between the two methods. So that's why a lot of people think, well, it's the same, really the same method. You see them in most circuits book, it says Thevenin and Norton. Especially when you have independent and dependent, you still need to find both. Because to find R Thevenin, what do you need? The open circuit over what? I sure circuit. So you can give Thevenin or Norton, doesn't matter which way you want it. And when you break it, when you cut some of the pieces out, sometimes it makes the circuit smaller. So it is actually a nice way of doing it. Also, when we get to the maximum power transfer, that's the last section, next class, to get a maximum power out of the load. If you want your load to give you the maximum power, you want the resistor of the load to equal R7. So you'll see that that's the last piece in the chapter. I'll stop with this video. I know I chopped the beginning of it, but...